I once described this next Laylee robot as a Roomba for a barn. This next robot and its presenter, well, they're both full of manure. Welcome back, Gray Prescott, to talk about the Laylee Discovery 120. Yes, uh, thanks Mitch for that colorful introduction. What is the collector? The manure vacuum. <clears throat> manure Roomba, manure eater, Laylee Discovery 120, or the Laylee Collector. By any name, the Laylee Discovery 120 is the most innovative solution for burn cleaning automation on the market today. This is a robot that autonomous, autonomously travels through the burn. It picks up manure, urine, and bedding left, in the, uh, left behind by the cows in the alleys and crossovers of the burn. This machine is simple to retrofit into most burns and provides savings when building a new burn around it. West Coast Robotics is proud to have 10 units running in British Columbia today on eight firms, including one firm on Vancouver Island. This, this machine provides a great way to convert former parlors, holding areas, and other spaces into clean cow housing. It's a simple way to automate manure cleaning done by tractor or hand today without much co construction costs. Laylee now has four years of total experience with the collector and an install base of over 1,700 units globally. How does it work? The collector drives through the barn on pre-programmed routes. Different routes are used to clean certain sections of the barn more or less often. For instance, more often behind a stall bed and less often directly in front of the feed bunk. The unit is 48 inches wide, which means it's easy for cows to walk around it. A low profile allows the machine to easily drive under gates to access different pens. The manure tank is large enough to handle around 80 milking cows worth of manure, cleaning most of the barn every two hours. Navigation. It uses ultrasound sensors, gyroscope, and encoders to navigate its way through the burn. The intelligent software helps the collector know where it is in the burn. This means that even if it encounters an, an obstacle, it will often find its way back to the charger. Water sprayers front and back are configurable for where it sprays water and how much. This machine achieves 45% drive time over a 24 hour period which allows it to clean up to 5,000 square feet per collector. It runs on one 12 volt battery, which means that you only need a regular 120 volt outlet to supply power to your charger. There's a header tank included for water filling. Simply provide a water supply to the float in the header tank and you're ready to go. The rubber squeegee that does the pushing and funnels manure into the tank is simple to replace when needed. And multiple collectors can be installed on the same farm or in the same barn and even share a dumping spot. So how is this machine different from conventional manure cleaning equipment? Well, I think first and foremost is there's no flume, no drop slots, or no cross channel. This represents a significant savings when looking at building new or retrofitting. There's no crossovers port hire, which means there's no step for the cow to make and no crossovers to be cleaned by hand. Weird shapes are possible, like L-shaped alleys, or when you're converting things like old parlors with no other way to clean them into cow housing. Expansion is simple, as there are no drop slots at the back of the barn to prevent uh, expansion. Small quantities of manure throughout the day mean reception pits can be smaller with smaller pumps. The collector can dump directly into underburn storage or into a manure pit where allowable. Alternatively, a modest reception pit and 10 horsepower manure pump will allow the collector to be placed any, pretty much anywhere on the farm. 
No fixed infrastructure means that this product can be moved to another location if a barn is replaced or no longer used. And no extra space at the end of the barn for things like alley scraper drives and corner wheels. So what are the benefits? Well, benefits for farms of tractor cleaning today are pretty straightforward. You could save one hour per day and save $912 per month. With the total cost of the collector being $690 per month, including the purchase price and service costs. There's no manure wave because the robot is sucking up the manure as opposed to pushing it. This results in cleaner feet, leading to better hoof health and less manure being tracked into the freestalls. <clears throat> the machine is cow friendly. They can walk around it. So new heifers won't be chased to the end of the bat of the other of the end of the burn uh, by a scraper sled that they've never seen before. And cleaning the whole burn every two hours results in a cleaner environment, which is better for the cows and nicer for the people in the burn. Water sprayers prevent hardened manure buildup in the dry months. This results in better traction. There's no cables or chains to replace. The wear parts are minimal and can be changed by West Coast Robotics service technicians. We've seen uh, SCC numbers drop on one firm by 80,000 on average for the first full year after the installation of the collector. And I should point out this is versus twice a day cleaning with a tractor. So why should you consider one for your firm today? Well, save time on your firm today if you're a tractor cleaning currently. Do so with minimal changes to your current facilities. Leave your options open to move to a new facility or add on to your current one. Create a clean burn to have clean and healthy cows. Save money on the construction of a new burn and really move toward full automation with no more crossovers to shovel. A last note is that this machine opens up many options for modern burn design. The idea of burns being designed entirely around the manure system with parallel alleys and common drop slots is no longer required to have an automatically clean burn. And next up, we're gonna to move to a video highlighting another farm here in Chilliwack. Uh, Corners Pride Farm is the largest robotic milking firm in British Columbia. Uh, in spite of the size, this is still a family run operation. Justin Vandermeulen, who we, you will see in the video, runs this firm with his father, Bernie, and his business partner, Brandon. Uh, and here he is with his story. So uh, my name is Justin Vandermeulen. Uh, this is Cornish Pride Farms. We've uh, been here for over 50 years, or the dairy's been here for over 50 years now. Uh, I farm with my father and uh, partner, Brandon Bishop. Um, we're milking 1,650 cows on 29 Lely robots right now. Uh, production sits around 38 kgs. We sit around 1. 1.6, just a little bit under kgs of fat per cow per day right now. Uh, the transition, uh, I guess, was interesting. I mean, we, I was still, we went from a double 16 pairing bone and then we converted to a double 25 in the same location, same parlor and kept milking. So I remember that, that was wild. Um, so this wasn't too bad, I guess, because we did it over I think eight, nine months, the construction of the new barns that behind us here and then the retrofits. Uh, so there was enough delay. It was, you kind of got a chance to catch your breath and just transition the herd through it. So I didn't think it went <laughs> too bad, actually. It was fun. Definitely by the last startup, it was, you were kind of sick of startups, that's for sure. We got pretty good at it after a while, but it was, you're definitely sick of it. But. Uh, I think to transition from the parlor itself, 
the cows did really good. The heifers always do a little bit better, but uh, in the end, we we didn't get rid of too many cows, so it went uh, went really well on that end. Uh, I guess positives would be uh, more milk. I mean, we were doing really, really good in our parlor when we actually switched. We actually had our best three months we ever had had in that parlor, the three months before we did our uh, start started swapping over. Um, so that was always interesting, but we're still higher production today. Like it's not even close. You look at kgs of fat per cow today, where we thought we were good in the parlor compared to now, like we're like way higher. Yeah, you see what the the amount of data that the robots and T4C collect. I mean, with the rumination and eating time callers. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It almost could be too much at times. You can get focused too much on one thing, but. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, in the future, once it gets more, just they just get more big farm experience. And I think the more people that use it and the more feedback they get, the better it'll be. So our one major goal is to always be improving. So I think that's Brian's goal too, is to always improve. Uh, so I would, I'd be lying if I said we've been easy on Brian through this whole experience. Uh, and not so much the robots. I mean, the robots do what they do. I mean, I think everyone knows that. They milk, they milk cows, they do a really good job of it. So it's more uh, figuring out, yeah, your labor, your efficiencies there, your maintenance costs, and your inputs and outputs, really. So trying to hammer down what we can do better to, yeah, improve production, but improve robot downtime robot costs, feed costs. I think that's where West Coast has really been by our side helping to improve. What advice? Uh, do your research, I guess. Um, really think about what you're putting robots in for. Uh, if you're getting out of parlor or bad or if you're just sick of farming and you think it's gonna be good, I mean, it's not like the work goes away. I mean, you have the stress and the time of milking goes away, but it's not like there's not other jobs to get done. The jobs you get replaced with are better and more enjoyable, but it's still uh, still farming. You're still out there every day. You gotta do, do your due diligence. So it's not like you get to just put robots in and call her quits for the day, go on vacation. It's, uh, it doesn't work that way. So I would say do your research first, but uh, Definitely, uh, yeah, do your homework of uh, yeah, what it costs you. Make sure you're feeding and you make sure you have the right nutritionist involved and that he has robot experience. It, uh, that's one thing I always find. It's, uh, we stuck with our nutritionist through it all, but uh, I've seen a lot of startups where they bounce around, it seems to go. So everyone has their different philosophy on how to feed cows through robots, it seems. That, uh, ours, we've tried stuff and worked and not worked but yeah definitely if you're putting in uh, if you decide to go with Leyland West Coast uh, I guess the best advice would be to listen to you and Brian they've done it a lot they've had a lot of experience now and uh, I think uh, you guys are know what works and what doesn't by now so that would be my best advice.